We are continuing in the 15th book of Israel, He who rules as Yahweh, righteousness prevails. Tonight we are starting in chapter 34, found on page 366. The title of the sermon that Pastor gave on 10, 17, 15 was, Democracy, what a laugh. Without Yahweh, the world will get worse until it is destroyed. I think this past week, if anyone has been paying any attention to the news at all, you would definitely agree with this sentiment that, yes, the world is going to get worse until it is destroyed because there have been so many events that have been taking place. I will just cover a few of them as we go along. But where I would like to pick up is on uh, page, not page, but verse 3, where Pastor was talking about the Ebola virus being an STD. And um, this has been verified in, in numerous news reports showing that it can be passed on as a, a sexually transmitted disease. And in verse 3, it said that Ebola that comes from unclean animals like pork, that's the one they eat, you take it into your blood. He says, turn there quickly, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 65, and associate that. It's great to have this in mind because they put their unclean products along with the clean. Pork is full of trichina. Now this Ebola, being an STD, they have found out now it is an STD, which means if you remember all the work I went through showing in several sermons about the microorganisms and how they must get into mankind in order to cross with mankind's genes and brought forth through the semen to someone else. Well, now it can bring forth STDs, but it can also bring forth from the saliva, from the Hollywood kissing, and so forth. When I was preparing for this class and reading that statement about Ebola being an STD, it reminded me of several things I've been seeing in the news over the past two weeks because there has been an outbreak of Ebola again in Africa, and this is... um, This is from the New York Times here, and this was posted just yesterday, 518, May 18, 2017. And it says that the number of suspected cases of Ebola has risen to 29 from 9 in less than a week in an isolated part of Democratic Republic of Congo, where three people have died from the disease since April 22nd, the World Health Organization said on Thursday. So if you remember a few years ago, the outbreak of Ebola was very prominent in the news and they were talking about how it was spreading and there was this big Ebola scare and then it just somewhat died out from the news and they thought that they had it somewhat contained. Now the World Health Organization was criticized for responding too slowly to an outbreak in West Africa in 2014 that left more than 11,000 people dead. So that's how many people that they estimate that died at that particular time. Now, they said the risk from the outbreak is high at the national level, the World Health Organization said, because the disease was so severe and was spreading in a remote area in northeastern Congo with suboptimal surveillance and limited access to health care. Within this article, they said that The area is so remote that the only way you could get there is by motorcycle. That's how remote the area is. Or maybe, um, you know, in in order to get all the equipment in there to monitor it, they'll have to get get in there by helicopter or some light aircraft. They said about a week ago, in addition to the nine suspected cases, 125 patients who had come into close contact with the disease was being monitored. Now, about 400 patients are being followed, even as nine new cases were reported on Thursday, according to the World Health Organization. Ebola virus causes fever, bleeding, vomiting, and diarrhea, and it spreads easily by contact with bodily fluids, including the two that Pastor mentioned in verse 4. The death rate is high, often surpassing 50% particularly the Zaire strain, which has been confirmed in two cases in this outbreak. Uh, In the time um, when this uh, outbreak was back in 2014, if you were looking into the Ebola virus, you would see that there are five different strains of the Ebola virus, of which this is just one of the five, at least at that time. I don't know how many strains there are at this time. So it shows where this outbreak 
took place. They said that aid groups and the World Health Organization have struggled to reach the affected area, which has no paved roads and can, only, and can be reached only by motorcycle, motorcycle ride through the forest or by helicopter or light aircraft. And then it talks about um, the first known case was on April 22nd, which was last month, less than a month ago, when a 39-year-old man who had fever, vomiting, and diarrhea and bleeding died on the way to a hospital. The person caring for him and the motorcyclist who transported him also died. So this is how deadly this disease is. And it, you know, I just thought it was very interesting that this is what we are reading here tonight, and this is what is going on in the world today concerning this particular virus. So continuing on in verse 5, this Isaiah chapter 65, Yahweh says in verse 2, I have spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people. Well, they are still rebellious, the whole world is. And this is what you see in the world today. You see the rebellion against the laws of Yahweh. You see that they don't have a desire to keep the laws of Yahweh. And as a result of that, you could see the problems that keep generating and keep coming up. And it's just getting more and more confusing, more and more perplexing. And they don't have any answers. And it's just from one problem to the next, one scandal to the next. It's everything that, you know, Pastor said in this title, democracy, what a laugh. And if you have been paying any attention to the politics over the past two weeks, you, you would agree with this sentiment because it's a laugh, it's a joke as to what is going on with the politicians and the scandals and everything that keeps cropping up from time to time, or it seems almost daily. Now, if you look at the last sentence in verse 7, you know, pastor is talking about the articles that he has been sending out and how many news organizations have been taking up these articles. And he showed that the people are seeking answers and they're not getting them from the doctors or the scientists. These are all money-making schemes like Christmas and Halloween. And he's talking about what we see in the, in the healthcare profession in the world today. Let's look at verse 9. He says, I've spread out my hands all the day to rebellious people who walk in a way which is not right, nor righteous, the word should be, after their own thoughts, devices. That's what you see in the world today. Fantasy mostly. They call it democracy in the governments. I call it hypocrisy in the governments. You know, and what you see when you look at what's going on in the governments, you see they pass laws, but the governments themselves don't keep their own laws that they pass. You know, and this is being exposed on a continuous basis that the governments themselves that pass these laws, they don't keep their laws. They don't even keep their own laws. And this is the hypocrisy that you see in the world today. They claim to be one thing and they're another. This is what the world is made up of right now. You may as well face it, it's not going to get any better. It's getting worse every day and the doctor keep promising vaccines that will make you well and keep you from getting sick which are all lies, and they know it, but it's a money-making scheme where they keep bringing in more money. Their love for money never ceases, and their love for money is a root of all evil, as the Savior said. And this is something that, um, you know, when Pastor said it's getting worse every day, again, yesterday in the news they had that incident in New York Times, I don't know how many of you are aware of it, where this one person decided to leave the road and drive down the sidewalk for three blocks, hitting over 20 people and killing one of them. And according to the reports, he was also using marijuana and, and PCP, and he claimed that he heard voices that God told him to do it. You know, so, you know, this, this, is, this is what is going on in the world, but just think about it. You know, here you are in New York City going about your business, and out of the blue, this just takes place. You'd be one of the 20 people that just got plowed down by this car racing down the sidewalk. This is how dangerous the world is. And in many instances, we think in the house of Yahweh that, you know, these things can't occur to us. But yes, it can. If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you could definitely be a victim as any of these people, any of these 20 that were hit, including the one that was killed. And, and three of them are severely injured. Even in the news this morning, I was looking at it, they were talking about people, um, they were on an amusement park ride, a Ferris wheel, and the Ferris wheel malfunctioning, 
a few of them were thrown off the Ferris wheel due to the malfunction. Now, this is a, a regular occurrence. I remember last year, looking at the news, it seemed like almost every day or every week, there was someone either being ejected from a roller coaster. Don't think the water rides are any better. They showed one, he was going down a tube, and it hit a bend, and whoosh, off the slide he went out into the field somewhere. You know, and this is, you know, these are the dangers that people are subjecting themselves to all in, in seeking amusement, you know, wanting to be entertained and so forth. And that's why the house of Yahweh warns us against these things so that we don't get caught up in some of these t- t- uh, statistics that is going on in the, in the world today. Look at verse 11. It says, they walk in a way that is not right. Verse 3, people who act defiantly against me continually to my face who sacrifice in gardens and burn incense on altars of bricks. Those sacrifice of food, as you might know, and every time you serve a meal, that is a sacrifice. Of course, a sacrifice can be offered to Yahweh, and it is eaten by man, but it's offered to Yahweh to use in his work when you offer it to him before you eat. That's what giving thanks means, or saying grace as the Christians call it. Will you say grace? Yeah, well, grace is a god too, or a goddess. The world is geared to God worship, and that's more hypocrisy. They pretend they're worshiping the Creator, when in actual fact they're worshiping gods. The Creator is not a god. He never claimed to be a god. He is your heavenly Father who really cares for mankind and is forming a kingdom from mankind. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 44 in the book of Yahweh concerning that statement in verse 12, that the world is geared to God worship. And remember also the money-making, because the God-worship and the money-making goes hand in hand. In Isaiah chapter 44, reading from verses 8 through 10, it says, Do not fear nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and have declared you are my witnesses? Is there a source of power except me? Truly, there is no other rock, I know not one. All who make graven images, images of gods, Elohim, Teraphim, are nothing. Their objects of devotion are worthless. Those who testify on their behalf do not see, nor do they understand, so that they may be ashamed. Who has formed a god, El, or cast a graven image without intending to make a profit? And that's what the God worship in this world is all about. It's all about money-making. Everything that the world does today is for that motive, it's in order to make money. And if you look at the God-worshipping festivals that the world carry out, it all centers around money-making, selling, buying, selling, buying, buying worthless things, getting worthless things. It's all about money-making. Keep that in mind as we go along, and you'll see the the point that pastor is making or has been making over the years concerning this system of God-worship. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 45, verse 5, where we read, I am Yahweh, and there is no other apart from me. There is no God, Elohim. I will strengthen you with this knowledge, though you did not recognize that it was me. And this is one of the foundation that the house of Yahweh is based upon, that there is that we do not worship God. God did not create the heavens and the earth. We know that the Creator's name is Yahweh. But to get away from this God worship, you know, pastor has spent his entire life teaching us to come out of this world, come out of this way of life, this way of thinking, to get away from the gods and the God worship, to get away from the money-making schemes. And, and, and it's such a subtle thing because it's put into your minds from the time that you go, in, you go into the institutes of higher learning, that your whole focus in life once you leave school, is to make money. That's your whole focus in life. Once you leave school, you got to get a job and you got to make money. And this is part of the system that pastor has been trying to get out of our minds. Our whole purpose in life is not to make money, it's to serve Yahweh. It's to serve one another. It's to be a servant to one another. That's our whole purpose in life. And that's the kingdom that Yahweh is forming. So to change that in our minds, that our whole purpose in life should be about money making or what is it, you know, what will I get out of this, takes a lot of work. Because that's the way we were brought up. That's the way we were trained to think of what's in it for me. 
What am I going to get out of this? Instead of thinking of what benefit you would be to someone else when you do the right thing. You know, and this is the type of selflessness that was exemplified by our high priest, Yahshua. That was the ultimate portion of his sacrifice because he wasn't thinking about himself when he laid down his life. He was thinking about others when he laid his life down. If he was thinking about himself, he would have never laid his life down. He would have just kept his life. But because he was putting others ahead of himself, he was capable of not just only laying down his life, but also resisting the temptation to sin because he recognized that there were, more, there were things in this world that was more important than himself. He was bred for it, but it's a, it was a great thing that he understood in bringing forth Yahweh's plan of salvation to us in his time period and also to us in these last days. Let's continue on here in verse 16. Continuing in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 4. Who assemble and spend the night keeping memorials for the dead. Halloween. And then he said the Pope wants to start calling that Holy Ween. Or Holy Ween. And they have the Holy Weeners, by the way. The Holy Weeners for those who can't eat vegetables. I'm not kidding. They are organizing this thing. This is a money-making scheme. Now remember what we read in Isaiah chapter 44, verse 10, and we just read it, where it says, Who has formed a god, El, or cast a graven image without intending to make a profit? This is what the world's worship is all about. It's all about money-making and what they can gain for themselves, not the benefit that they could bring to others. So this is a money-making scheme. And he showed that it has even surpassed December 25th, the lie of the sun, God, Baal, December 25th. Let's look at verse 19. Because, you know, he goes into that showing that this could be e easily proven that December 25th wasn't the birthday of the Savior, but of the sun God. Now they took the book of Yahweh, Isaiah 34, verse 16, search out the book of Yahweh and read. And when they removed the names Yahweh and Yahshua from the Holy Scriptures, they put lords and gods they would change in the only authorized version that the king would authorize, the King James Version. That's a rendition of the book of Yahweh. That was, that was in the house of Yahweh. So that was a rendition of the book of Yahweh that was in the house of Yahweh. The book of Yahweh says the house of Yahweh. Psalm 23, I will dwell in the house of Yahweh. But the King James, it says, house of the Lord. Well, the Roman Catholic Church admits to removing these names from the books of Yahweh renditions. Not the book of Yahweh, but the renditions of the book of Yahweh. The book of Yahweh didn't come back into effect until 1987. And it's here today, it's here to stay, it's here to say, stay too. Satan won't destroy it anymore, nor the house. You know, and this is something that we should treasure, having the book of Yahweh. I remember when I, um, when I got my first book of Yahweh, I mean, it was... One of the most special thing to me next to my talit when I got my first talit. And it's really a great thing when you do acquire these items and it is a treasure to hold on to it, to read from it, to study it, to make notes in it and so forth. The book, verse 22, let's look at verse 22. The book, The Mark of the Beast, I was writing that 40 years ago. 40 years in the wilderness. Does that ring any bells? You know, Moshe? 40 years in the wilderness. He trained for 40 years before Yahweh would send him back to get the people. He became very humble then. He decided he wasn't able to do it. And Yahweh said, I know you're not, but I'm going to help you. Here he was, 80 years old, and he could still get out of bed. Someone said that hop, skip, and jump. And this was uh, that Feast of Tabernacles where Pastor was hopping, skipping, and jumping across the stage. And he was 81 at that time, or around 80, 81 at that time. It, uh, and, he, and as he said, um, the bread sack, it said that the kingdom of Yahweh is just a hop, skip, and a jump away. Referring to during the feast when I got very joyous with the young children up here on the stage, and I was hopping and skipping with them, more than they were, I think. When you get as old as I am, you're not supposed to be able to do such goofy things. You know, and it, uh, again, it's, it's remarkable, the health of the one sent, and you know how Yahweh is sustaining him and keeping him. 
Let's look at verse 24. This is on the, he said one, this one was on the bread sack this morning, the Sabbath bread, which I hope everyone is enjoying with us. Rich or poor, come and eat. There is no price. But this one was on, but this one was on something special that he gave me this morning. It says, we used to miserably seek after silver and gold. Now we are joyfully satisfied with one cent. Praise Yahweh. Now we are joyfully satisfied with one cent. And, and this is the understanding that Yahweh is, is giving us because that is Yahweh. The seeking after the silver and the gold, that is God worship. You know, that's going after the ways of the gods. That's the way of Cain. That's the way of the, of the Coptic Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church. That's why they can't turn their minds to righteousness because of that love for money, which is a root of all evil, as we have covered previously. Verse 25, one cent. Well, for those who don't know it, that's a prophecy prophesying the one cent who the high priest, Yahshua Messiah, spoke of. He gave prophecies galore on that, and he sits as high priest over the house of Yahweh. Hebrews 10, 21, teaching them what? Hebrews 10, 16, putting the laws of Yahweh in their hearts. And this is what has been done in the house of Yahweh from the very first day that we set foot in the house of Yahweh. The laws of Yahweh is being instilled within our hearts and mind. Well, weren't they done away with? Yes, they were by the Pope and all the world, and that's why they're in such a miserable mess right now. That's why sickness is spreading all over the world. And I was looking up, um, or I was looking at a program early on this week, and it was talking about, you know, one in two children have some type of disease. So I decided to look up some of the information pertaining to this. And this is from the Center for Disease Control. And they're saying, well, let me get, before I get into that, I just typed it on Google, you know, how many children are born with diseases? And the first thing came up was birth defects from kids' health, and it's under the heading, how many babies are born with disabilities? And it said there are more than 4,000 different kinds of birth defects. More than 4,000 different kinds of birth defects. Now, these are different ones, different birth defects ranging from minor ones that need no treatment to serious ones that cause disabilities or require medical or surgical treatment. According to the March of Dimes, one out of every 33 babies born each year in the United States has a birth defect. So now going back to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, it says birth defects are common, costly, and critical conditions that affect one in every 33 babies born in the United States each year. Read more about what we have learned about birth defects and how women can improve their chances of having a baby born without a birth defect. Birth defects are common. Every four and a half minutes, a baby is born with a birth defect in the United States. That means nearly 120,000 babies are affected by birth defects each year. Birth defects are structural changes present at birth and that can affect almost any part or parts of the body. Example, heart, brain, foot. They may affect how the body looks, works, or both. Birth defects can vary from mild to severe. The well-being of each child affected with the birth defects depends mostly upon which organ or body part is involved and how much it is affected. Depending upon the severity of the defect and what body part is affected, the expected lifespan of a person with a birth defect may or may not be affected. But this is, this is the sickness that Pastor is talking about here. This is the miserable mess that the world has gotten itself into because they have chosen to not follow the laws of Yahweh. They have chosen to do away with Yahweh's laws. So now you're seeing the results multiply. And even in the, in the news this week, they were showing, um, I think it was a goat in India that was born with one eye. It, I, I, didn't, um, I didn't think about getting a, a picture of that one, but you know, the goat, it, it's, um, it's a birth defect. Animals, too, are suffering from birth defects. And they show that when the brain, when both hemispheres of the brain don't fully develop, then it fuses, and this goat has one huge eye. 
I mean, it, it's a terrifying thing to look at, and there's the stuff of, you know, that gives you bad dreams if you were to dream <laughs> something like this one-eyed goat or something like that. But, you know, these, these are the problems that they're having in the world because, of, again, of what Pastor said here. He said, that's why sickness is being spread all over the world. Thousands and thousands of children being born with cancer and all kind of STDs. Yes, cancer is an STD, believe it or not, is being transferred from one family member to another, one person to another, and they, and they know this. They know it, but they don't want to tell the people for some reason. And then he goes back into Ebola being an STD. Let's look at verse 28, and let's read Isaiah chapter 65, verse 4. Who assemble and spend the night keeping memorials for the dead. That's Halloween. They used to call it All Saints Day. They had too many days they were taken off. To many of the saints they were taking days for. So they wipe all of that out and they said, let's just take this one day and make it All Saints Day and we'll worship all these dead bodies. There are nothing left then but bones now and they're about gone too, but they're still worshiping those people. The dead know not anything your Bible says. The secret to salvation is believing the Holy Scriptures. Not like Christianity now, they say only believe. The Savior said, only believe, speaking of someone he was about to heal and told him, only believe. They took those words, turned them around where they say, believe only. And that's what the world wanted to hear. They wouldn't have been deceived if they hadn't, because Luke 24, 25 says, you're fools if you don't believe all that Yahweh's prophets have spoken and live by those laws. Yahshua said, don't even think, don't even think that I've come to destroy the laws, which means somebody was out there trying to convince people that he was going to destroy the laws. Well, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Essenes, who are now Catholics on the seven hills of Rome, to whom Yahweh said, I will take you beyond, beyond Babylon, well, he did, he took them to Rome and gave them free will. And that's where they are now changing the laws and telling the world what to think. You saw a great example of that, ruling the world through the Supreme Court of America. That's the reason I say it's not democracy anymore, it's hypocrisy. They're pretending that, they're, that church and religion and politics separate, but they're not. They're teaching all of this in the schools, but you can't put the Ten Commandments in the school. That's teaching religion. They say sodomy is not a religion. It is. It's shown in the scriptures to be their religion. Sodom and Gomorrah were both examples of Yahweh's eternal fire that he has in reserve. You know, and, and, and as we look at the confusion and the turmoil that the earth is in, the, the politicians are in, that the governments are in, we know that they're inching closer and closer to nuclear war. As a matter of fact, you know, over the past few months, there have been more news articles, documentaries that have been being brought out about the devastation of nuclear weapons, the likelihood of a nuclear war coming about. You have heard more and more talk about World War III and its possible effects and so forth. Because right now, many people in the world are truly scared as to what's going to occur because they could see the unstable political situation, not just within the United States, but in all governments of the world at this time. And they're seeing that society is breaking down and it's going to break down. Now, when you, when you could think about... You know, someone could just take their vehicle and just decide to drive three blocks down the sidewalk, just hitting people at random. That's craziness. You know, that's madness. But that has not only occurred in the United States, it also occurred in Germany, where they, you know, where they, I think it was either Germany or France, where it was over 80 people that were killed. You know, so you can see what is taking place, and this is the message that Pastor is bringing forth that it's going to get worse. Continuing on in verse 31, he said, and Yahshua said he's going to send his Malachim right after the nuclear strikes that darken the sun. Then he's going to start his kingdom. He's going to actually put it in action to rule the world and then the universe. But he says he will send his Malachim and they will search out and get rid of all, all who are unrighteous, all who are evil, who follow the evil of the gods, Genesis 3, 5. 
Do this and you'll be like the gods, evil. That's in your own Bible. Brothers, we really have to hold fast to what we are being shown in the house of Yahweh. We are on the right track, which is going to take us straight into Yahweh's kingdom. So at this time, I'll ask for everyone to please stand. It's now my pleasure and opportunity to present the next teacher, the great Kohan Michael Hawkins. Praise Yahweh. Please be seated. Shalom, man. So as it said there in verse 31, as the Kahan just said, you know, we're going to go out into the universe. And Yahweh's going to send his malachim, get these things, get his kingdom going soon, very soon. Let's look down to uh, verse 39 there at the bottom of the page. It says, we're going to win this battle. Praise Yahweh. Yahweh shows that. You know, there's a battle that's going on right now between the adversary and, of course, who thinks that she can destroy all of, all of mankind and get rid of the house of Yahweh. But Yahweh says we're going to win the battle. It's, it's, it's a guaranteed thing that the, the gates of hell will not prevail over Yahweh's house. So he says, that's the reason I know it. He says, we're going to be protected. The house of Yahweh is going to be protected. And they would have destroyed the house of Yahweh a long time ago had he not been protecting it. You know, and, and we can see that, even the things that we have seen in the house. But even before, you know, the house of Yahweh was established, even in past days, you know, he says, it would have killed my family in Oklahoma if Yahweh hadn't have protected that family. And he shows that he did. You know, because if he could have gotten rid of his family, then, of course, there would have been no witness. And if there was no witness, then the house of Yahweh would have never been established, Right. So he says, if you remember, the same thing occurred with Yeshua Messiah when he was born. Then the righteous king of Yada sent out his soldiers and killed all the firstborn up to three, two or three years of age in hopes of getting rid of Yeshua. And Yahweh said, take him to Egypt and raise him up there. Well, that prophecy showed that he would call his son out of Egypt, and he already had predicted all of these moves. You know, he had it already it was already done and he had already had had told his his prophets these things and of course they prophesied these things and wrote of these things so Yeshua went into Egypt and he came out of Egypt you know showing that he set the example that this is something that we all must do you know we haven't personally been into Egypt or lived in Egypt but we've gone into Egypt and we've come out of it you know out of the world itself and so Yahweh even showed that, you know, and did it with his own son to show that, uh, you know, that symbolic, the, the symbolism was there. But the amazing thing is that Yahweh had already predicted all this, you know, thousands of years ago before this, all of his, his, his prophecies, you know. It's amazing the mind that he has, you know, and how he can get, do all of these things. And, and he had it all figured out even beforehand. He knew the things that was going to take place. If he allowed certain things and did not allow certain things, he knew that what the outcome would be, you know. Now, he let mankind play this out because he had to. You know, it has to be done by mankind, okay. The Malachim can't step in and do anything, and Yahweh never stepped in and, and did anything, altered anything in any way unless it was something that had to be done if his plan would be altered. He says, now think of how Yahweh could predict and cause his prophets to write this before it ever occurred, thousands of years before it occurred. And he had his prophets write about it and say, I'll call my son out of Egypt. You know, the thing is, is that you can see how, you know, it's like the old saying goes, Yahweh's sitting out on the end of the limb with the saw, you know. And he's there in, in display uh, in the entire universe, you know. And, of course, to many of the demons and so forth, he's a laughing stock because they think, like, you know, this can't take, possibly can't take place. But if he told all of these things to his prophets, and all he did was just say, here's what it is. And like Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah wrote, you know, his word, when it goes out, it doesn't return back to him void. It always accomplishes the things that he said he would do. So he certainly wasn't concerned about any of these things. He, he inspired his prophets to write of these things, and then he let it take place. So the prophet said... I'll call my son out of Egypt. He says, well, he had to go to Egypt first, but he had to be born in a certain place where Zebulun, the tribe of Zebulun of Galilee was. And he had to be born there. But then he was called out of Egypt, so he had to go to Egypt. And due to the hatred for this child, knowing who he was going to be, 
when he grew up, Satan really wanted to get rid of him quickly. So she tried in various ways, but of course, Yahweh always set his hand and only allowed her to do so much. And she wanted to get rid of me, Pastor says. And that's the reason why they had a so-called Holocaust in Germany. And Hitler, in his own words, said he was doing the bidding of the Catholic Church and killing all of these people. My ancestors were slipped away. They, they came to America, and they came in directions, he says, you wouldn't believe it, and on land that we're sitting on today and didn't even know it. And if you remember, that was, he was talking about the fact that he had found that his, his ancestors had actually owned land uh, right here, you know, and, and uh, it wasn't even known about until, you know, so it shows. It's not, it's not, these things are just not coincidences, and these things are not things that, that anybody can possibly plan, you know. It's not like we thought, oh, we're going to buy the land and set up the house of Yahweh there because one of my ancestors, you know, owned this before, you know. You know these were things that were set up long, long ago, and it, you can see Yahweh's hand in it. Um, he said, it's so amazing how it all took place, and now we're seeing all of it. Don't forget to look up the numbers in all of this, he says. But now, he said, in this time of trouble, when we're having diseases everywhere, just as the Kahan just brought out, you know, all of these, these birth defects, we're seeing them everywhere throughout the earth, and that was predicted. And Yeshua himself predicted it, but it was predicted by Yahweh's prophets before that. See? Before that. Even the prophet Uremia and stuff talked about these diseases and things that were going to take place. Uh, although Revelation 9 shows them, along with the nuclear war that would darken the sun and cause these mighty earthquakes to take place. He says, now that's all in addition to this drought. The mud, the raining mud and the hail, you know, some places. You know, they have some places right now, as late as it is in the season, up in Colorado in the mountainous areas and stuff, they're actually having a foot of, over a foot of snow in some places. It's actually snowstorms going on in different places. And he says, Abilene, I keep thinking of them and praying for rain. You remember, this is the time when the drought came, first started coming, and, coming, and they uh, prayed to their gods about rain. Um, and they would, had that big hailstorm come through that gave uh, so much damage to everything. In verse 45, he says, but, you know, he talks about God, and he says, you know, they, 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 he can't give them rain, but yet they still want to trust him for salvation. He says, I mean, that's a pretty serious thing. It's more serious than a few drops of rain. In verse 45, he says, but if he can't answer your prayer there, why would you put your life in his hands? You know, why in the world would they put their life in the hands of this God that can't even answer their prayers? You know? But they don't ever think about that. They never give any thought about those things. Uh, you know, and, and, and they... Uh, it's just a, f a big fake thing that they belong there. You know, I used to call them serpy, serpy Christians, you know, because they just, they just ooze with the love of Jesus. And it's just like, I mean, when they talk, it was so fake, you know. It's like, look, nobody, nobody feels as passionate about things like that as you do. And it's just like, even just their the, the mannerism was just so fake when they talked about these things, you know, and about the Lord and Jesus and God doing this and all that. And it's just like, ah. It's a big turnoff to, you know, to be around those kind of people because they're so fake. Um, and Yahweh showed the first three chapters of Genesis that this was going to take place. Now, four chapters, the first four chapters of Genesis show this, and we'll be covering that in detail as we continue here. But in Genesis 3, uh, Satan comes and says, has Yahweh said this? And Eve said, yes, he did. He said this. And Satan said, well, you're not going to die. You have an eternal soul. You won't die because you can't die. You're going to be like that gas of God somewhere out there, right? Floating around, you know? But you can't die. That was, that was a big lie that, that she convinced Eve to believe, that, you know, she wouldn't die, that Yahweh was actually a liar. Here's the creator, and they call him the creator a liar. Same thing they're doing today in all the churches. Well, Satan let her believe this, of course. And they're still believing the same lies today, even though the Savior himself said that they're going to perish. In 1 Yachanan 3.15, he says that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Now, he didn't name everything there, but he did, he did talk about a murderer. You know? And, of course, if, it's, if, if a murderer is going to die, then anybody else who breaks the other ten commandments, right, the other nine commandments are going to die as well. So 
It, it, that means that you won't have eternal life, and, and you're going to perish. You know, Malachi says it's, it's going to leave them neither root nor branch. Okay, neither root nor branch. Now you know that when you cut down a tree, if the stump is left there, then a tree, another tree can grow up. You know, and of course you have branches, and that's where the buds are, and the branches, so forth, and produces the, the fruit and so forth. But Yahweh says there's going to be neither root nor branch. You know, there's not going to be any more God worshiper in the kingdom of Yahweh. No one on, on the face of this earth will remain as a God worshiper. Because remember, Yahweh says he's going to, all the gods will be destroyed. You know, they, they will come to their end. They will be sentenced and they will come to their end. There will be no gods throughout the entire universe. Um. So he says in 1 Shaka 9, 3, that either you practice righteousness and become righteous or you practice sin. And anyone who practices righteousness, of course, is classified as being righteous in that chapter. And those who practice breaking those laws are classified as belonging to Satan, the devil. So anybody can read that. You know, any Christian can read these things and find in the King James Version, it's the same thing that's written there. If you practice righteousness, you're righteous. If you practice sin, then, of course, you belong to the devil. Romans 6.16 6, says that, right, about the servants and so forth. So Satan says, well, do this and you'll be evil like the gods, showing that the gods are evil. You know, it plainly tells you that. If you practice righteousness, you'll be as Yahweh himself, and of course, and then you'll be able to enter into the gate of the city of Yahweh, into his kingdom, as Revelation 22.12-14 says. Because remember, not everybody, remember the ones who the God worshippers were outside that gate. They weren't allowed in. But the Savior's going to be speaking, uh, the Savior's doing the speaking, and, and Yachanan wrote everything down that he said. So, blessed are those who keep his laws, for they have the right into life. And then all the rest are cast out, as Matthew 13, 41 says. Now, he says, Matthew 13, 41 through 42, he says, I'm going to send my messengers. He said, the King James Version wrote angels, as if there's some kind of spirit beings that's going to come down and do all this work. He says that's another falsehood. Yahweh is working through man. Man is going to do this. The sons of man. Yeshua said, I am the Savior because I am the Son of Man. Because I am the Son of Man. So he couldn't be that if he were anything else. So, you know, the King James says angels... Uh, Teeth you. Let me open this thing up here. Wow. Okay. This is a uh, slow. That's what it is. Okay. This is a uh, companion Bible. However, as you see here, well, the text is the authorized version of the 1611. Okay. So it is King James Version in here uh, but this is just a study Bible and actually I want to show you in Matitia oh 13 okay let's see you get a little closer there aha there we go okay so 1341 42 he says but what I want to do well he says the son of man shall, shall send forth his angels okay now we know that word is angel is a messenger uh Jump back here to verse, this is chapter, chapter 1. But what I want to show you here is it says, uh, ah, there it is, okay. Uh, he sent forth his angel, okay, the angel of the Lord. This is talking about Theosoph in a dream. But if you look over here, you see angel. It means messenger, okay? The content must always show whether it's human or heavenly, Okay? But notice, it means messenger, so it plainly tells you that. And the context is going to show you whether it's talking about someone from heaven or whether it's talking about uh, an earthly being. So if you go back to, to Matthew or Matthew here, when he gets into this, he says, uh, The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, his messengers, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those that do iniquity. Now, if you, if you look back up here, Remember, it's going to show you in the context what it is. It says, the field is the word, the good seed, the great seed, the righteous seed are the children of the kingdom. 
and the tares are the children of the wicked one. Okay, so it tells you the children of the kingdom. You notice children means sons, okay? So the sons of the kingdom are the righteous seed and the sons of the wicked one are the tares. So when he says here, the tares are going to be gathered and burned into fire. Now the son of man will send forth his messengers and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them that do iniquity, okay? And then if you jump down to here, it says, then shall the righteous, notice the righteous, which were the children, all the sons of the kingdom, the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So it shows that this word messenger here, the word angels in King James, messenger, should be and is talking about human beings. I had an old note here. You can see it in red. It says, uh, kingdom here on earth unless sinners uh, unless sinners are sent to heaven and then are taken out. Okay? So that was an, a, 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 uh, just a reference there from the King James showing you the fact that Yahweh uses mankind. And that's what Pastor's saying here, that it's not some, like some spirit being coming down. When Matithi is talking about there is... You, it's the work. It's the work is in the house of Yahweh. It's his messengers that are, and we're going to see that in just a moment here. It's the, his messengers, those who are doing the work in the will of Yahweh. That's the ones who's getting, who's doing this job. And that's what you're preparing for now. Hopefully everybody realizes that. You're preparing right now to turn this whole world around. Okay? You're not going to have some... Some being come down from heaven and stop it all, you know, and do this and do that. No, you're going to change the hearts and minds of the people of this world. And Yahweh's going to give you that authority to, be, to, to do that. When he does give you that authority, you need to be ready to take that authority. And that's why we're in training now. Like he says, I am the Savior because I am the Son of Man, in verse 50 there, because I'm the son of man. He couldn't do that if he was anything else. He couldn't be the son of man who paid for our sins, our past sins. He couldn't unless he was the son of man. And that was a prophecy of the Savior, Yeshua, Messiah. Okay? Now, over in, uh, across the page in verse 54, he says, Get you a book of Yahweh. Search out the book of Yahweh and read. It's here again. It's here for you. Isaiah 34, 16, Search out the book of Yahweh. The book of Yahweh was taken away from you, as prophecy said it would be, and it has been restored now again. And I remember when it was restored, and I remember receiving that, that book, you know, way back, back then in, in 1987 when it first came out. I remember we went to the feast, and they had a little room in the back there, back behind the, where the press room is now. And uh, they had the book stored in there, and we all got in line and went back there and received our books. And one thing, though, you know, the book of Yahweh has never, ever, you know, people sometimes will, will complain about this and complain about that and say, you know, why would we give everything away and so forth? You know, what, but the thing is, you know, certain things are, 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 we ask for donations to help out in the cost to keep it going because if people realize how small of an operation we have here, and how we have reached the world in the capacity that we have, you know, we just blow them away. But one thing, I have to say this, one thing, the book of Yahweh, even though there's been inflation, a lot of inflation since 1987, the cost of the book of Yahweh, the donation cost for the book of Yahweh, has always remained the same. It's never changed. In 1987, 50 bucks today would be worth $109 over twice its cost, you know. But the house of Yahweh has always had the book of Yahweh available to anybody who wanted it, you know. So it's always been made available for people to be able to get it. And, you know, uh, when people gripe and complain, it's usually because it's just like Yeshua said, they're treasure somewhere else. You know, if they treasured that, I remember, man, I remember this book right here, you know. This thing's like 40 years old. I remember when I got it, uh, you know, of course, it's got that on there now, right? But I remember when I got it, I mean, this thing here, I think it was like $53, you know. And I saved and I saved and I saved to get this thing, you know. 
So when the book of Yahweh came out, I definitely was grabbing one of those things, you know. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it's what we value in life, you know. But I just thought it was interesting because I always think about that is that, you know, it's never, gone, it's never risen. It's never gone up. Although the cost of paper, the cost of everything has gone up. You have seen the price of electricity now, how much is jacked up like triple the price almost now. It's amazing, you know. But we'll continue to, to offer these things to the house, to, the, to anybody who wants them, you know. So verse 57 down the bottom page says, Well, Yahweh says, uh, talking about Satan, that she can't do that. She can't uh, do anything to the house of Yahweh and so forth or deceive us. Uh, he says, and there's a reason, great reason there. Yahweh has a high priest over the house of Yahweh. He's the son of man who has limited powers right now to help the house of Yahweh. Okay, limited powers. Now, nah, we ain't talking about no superhero here, you know. We're talking about Yahshua Messiah. His power, not that his powers are limited, but the thing is, it doesn't diminish his power, but his authority to be able to do certain things to help out the house of Yahweh is, has to be limited because we have to be proven to believe without seeing. And so, therefore, he's in training ready to, to give us all of these things and share all these things with us. So he has limited powers right now to be able to help the house of Yahweh. And notice what it says. And to help those who he wants as his messengers. You get that? He called you here for that reason, by the way. Yes, you can become a messenger of his. Okay, and that's what we just covered in Matithi there. Okay, when he's talking about the messengers will go out, you know, and separate the wicked from the, from the righteous and so forth. You know, we'll go out and we'll be, able to, we'll be teaching. We'll know the hearts and minds, just like Yeshua could know the hearts and minds of a person by their actions. And that's why he said, that if by their fruits, you will, you will know them, you know. It'd be the same thing with us. So we have to study now. We have to train now. And he says, I'm going to send my messengers out. And he says, this is Matthew 13, 41 to 43. And they're going to gather together those who are wicked and those who are evil, who are filled with iniquity, who practice breaking Yahweh's laws. Okay? And so we will have that authority to enforce these laws and to point them out so that not so much that, you know, they will be forced like under thumb, you know, pushed down. But the fact is... Oh, Joe down here who likes to eat bacon in the morning. Guess what? He's going to get up in the morning and there ain't going to be no bacon found on the face of this earth for him to eat. See? So he will have to eat clean foods. And in that manner, he will have to be forced. He will be forced to eat it <laughs> because he's not going to find the unclean. You know, and we're going to teach him, no, that's not what you eat in the morning. You know, here's the proper foods to be eaten. And we'll show him and we'll teach him that way. And so... They'll have the proper things to eat that will give their minds the understanding that where they can grab the teachings that we, that we give to them. Because right now, the foods that the people eat, they, they can't, their minds can't think rationally. They can't think clearly to understand the things that they're taught. That's why you, when you show them those things, it just goes right over their head. Uh, I'll, you know, it's like I'll never forget <laughs> years ago going to my mom, you know, and it's like, you know, I'm from Louisiana, so here she is cooking stuff, you know, crawfish. And I said, you know, I go through and I read it, a whole book of Leviticus 11 about the clean and the unclean. And I looked down and said, you see, Mom, that's the reason why I can't eat it. That's unclean. And she looked at me just so serious and said, oh, no, I washed it. It's clean. It's just like, Ding! I knew then. It's just like, you know, it's like you can't, you can't, you know, you can't make someone understand anything like that. They've got to see it themselves, you know. And, of course, that's why, you know, Yahweh has a call a person and open their minds. So he goes on and he says, um, and if you look there, he says, you'll find that he's, he's not going to fool around with the lawbreakers. They're going to be cast into the lake of fire where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then he says, uh, talks about the trial, that, that time of trial period. Revelation 20 shows that. He says, I call it the white throne judgment where everyone who's ever lived will be resurrected and brought before Yahweh to be judged. And those who have done wickedly, they're going to be judged by their own works, he says. And those who will not practice following Yahweh's laws, there will need, be neither root nor branch left of them. Okay. Um, jump on over here to verse uh, 64 on the next page. He says, now there's two trees in the garden. Remember that. There's two trees. There's one that's flourishing, as Yahweh said it would, but now it's falling 
and the troubles it has created in these 6,000 years, those troubles are now catching up with everyone, and they don't know what to do. Political problems, the weapons of mass destruction, uh, he says they know that when they start, there's a likelihood that no life will be left alive. And that's what the scientists are saying. Their own scientists are telling them they don't know what to do, so they're going to follow the Catholic Church some more. And then the ones that got them into this mess, and then, of course, they're the ones who got them into that mess to begin with, but yet they'll continue to follow them. Because remember, it says even after they, they go through the war and they see these things, they still won't repent of those things. Uh, verse 65, he says, They're cut off from Yahweh, as Isaiah 59, 1 through 2 says. Their help is in their gods. Those are the ones they're going to pray to. But Yahweh says that you're going to be, they're going to be cursing their gods because they're no help. Isaiah 44 and 45 show that there is no power except Yahweh. You will learn that, he says. You will learn that. Well, you remember he just finished, well, and he's continuously teaching now and said that, you know, for people to understand that there's no gods and no God with Yahweh, that this is one of the hardest lessons ever taught. And I remember, you know, years and years ago, you go back to, to, to older sermons where he always talked about God worship, God worship, God worship, God worship. He, he pumped it and pumped it and pumped it into our minds that there is no God with Yahweh, you know. And the thing is, you see, if they remove, if you remove the name of Yahweh, which they have done, then it's the name of Yahweh in which there is power. But if they remove the name, then there's no power to help. And that's why he says that there's no power except Yahweh. You know, the gods have no help. Um, let me see something here. Matitia. Matitia 1. 1. Oh. In Matitia 121. If you notice here, he says, uh, you shall send forth the Son, okay, and you shall call his name Jesus, right? For he will save his people from their sins. This is, is, is like an example of that. If you notice down here in the footnote, okay, it says, um, oh, right here, Jesus, okay? For this, okay, he says Appendix 48, the same as the Hebrew Hoshea, okay, which is Yeshua ben Nun's name. In Numbers 13. Okay, it says with Jah prefix, which of course we know is Yah or Yahweh, right? Prefix, which, is, which means God our Savior or God who is salvation. Now, anyone who knows anything would know that you could take Jah, which is actually Yah, and then the whole Shia or his name, Yahshua, which means Yahweh who is salvation. But notice what they do. They throw God in there, you see? So they give you some information. They tell you his name is Yahweh, okay? One, one verse, there's one place in the King James Version where the name of Yahweh was still in there. And I, in, in, in Psalms 83, 18, it says Jehovah. And you'll find Jehovah in a couple of places. But in Psalm 68, verse 4, Yah is in there. The name Yah is in there, okay? So it shows you that that wasn't taken out. Yahweh left that in there on purpose to show people that his name, what his name is. But if you took that, Yah, and, and you added in there, Yah is our Savior, Yahweh is our Savior, or Yahweh who is salvation, then they can understand that. But it's so slick and so crafty, the way that they did that, they took that out of that, and they removed that name. So it's just like the same as when you look in the dictionaries and you see where it says, you know, Yahweh, the God of Israel. Well, he's not the God of Israel, you know. Yahweh is the Heavenly Father. He's not a God. But they put that in there on purpose so it throws people off so they'll never understand those things. We'll jump down to 68. It says, There's no way that any man could run this earth successfully, successfully without Yahweh. There's no way that a man or a woman could successfully run a household even without Yahweh. Okay? Why? Because there's laws that govern everything. You know, there's laws that govern uh, the way we dress, the way we eat, the way we act, all of these things, you know, the, how, how we're supposed to act with our families, to teach our families and so forth. You know, all of these things are there. There's laws everywhere that Yahweh describes everything that, that goes on. 
like he says, from the kitchen to the bathroom, you know, all of these things are described in Yahweh's laws for us to be able to know these things. Now, if you verse, jump down to verse 7, he says, you, uh, and he's talking about the Sabbath day, okay, and he talks about how the Supreme Court goes in and changes things uh, for the Catholic Church. And he, in verse 71, he says, you think they can't enforce the Sabbath day? They've already started. Not the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. Exodus 20 says that. But the Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. Sunday is what they're going to enforce. Sunday is the Lord's Day, as they call it, and that's what it says in the Catholic Bible now. Remember to celebrate the Lord's Day. So they changed the commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days will you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh. That's the seventh day. And he blessed the Sabbath day. Well, they say, you know, well, that, that's done away with in, in the second part of the, of the book of Yahweh, you know. Or in the King James Version, as they call it, the New Testament, you know. It's a new thing now. But that's not what Hebrews 4 tells you, okay? Ooh, I've got to show you that in here. Uh, <clears throat> because in Hebrews 4, they know it. You know, it's, it's there. They know these things. Uh, and it's interesting now. I didn't have a center reference King James, but... This works just as well. Because he says here in verse 9, and this is what pastors talk about, there therefore remains a rest to the people of Yahweh. Okay? The rest. Uh, if you look down here, uh, can you see that? Can you see that? Here it says the word rest. Okay? It says a rest day. Uh, I'll have to back it up a little bit. It says, a rest day, okay? The great day of rest under the rule of the great priest, okay? Zechariah 6, 13. And then here, this word here is Greek. is sabbatimos, or Sabbath, okay? And the verb, the verb sabbatizo means to keep Sabbath, okay? So it, it plainly shows, and, and, and the reference books, you know, Yahweh didn't leave people ignorant. You know, they're there if they just read these things and see these things. And this is why people study these things and know these things and learn these things sometimes so that when Yahweh calls them, their minds are open and they can gladly accept the things that Yahweh uh, shows forth to, to, the, to this world. And so they can come to Yahweh's house and, and learn even more at this time.